I actually like that song, man. It's kind of nice. I, I'm going to take that song and I'm going to see if I can cut together an introduction uh, that's only like maybe 30 seconds long or something and use that song, man, because it's uh, actually pretty neat. Sorry, you're still seeing the dancing girl because I'm actually doing one other quick thing here. And there. There we are. There you go. So, man, it's it, it got cold overnight, man. It was pretty chilly last night. It's pretty pretty chilly today for Texas. Don't give me that yeah, cold. For Texas, it's a little chilly. It's, uh, wow, it's 62 degrees inside my apartment right now. So I've got the, got the little windbreaker going. Not that there's any wind in here. But yeah, uh, got some news, I guess. Um, let me turn my sound on here. So we'll get a little background noise instead of just me talking. Turn this down a little bit. Oh man. So yeah, walked to the store today and I don't know why, but since yesterday, um, oh, I didn't, re <laughs> I didn't realize it was on the house widget. If you're, if you're really offended. Anyways, there. Um, like I said, Turner, I didn't, I did not say that it's not colder in other areas. Hell, in Wisconsin, in Wisconsin and in Minnesota, I have friends in both places and they there's been like this news article going around i forget who who put it out i think it was cnn or somebody but apparently over the next couple of days in like the midwest like minnesota wisconsin chicago those areas it is going to be colder in those areas than it is in antarctica that's pretty cold man it's going to be like like negative 30 negative 40 negative 50 <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Jesus, man. Good, good luck with that, people. Cause yeah, uh, that's why I don't complain that hard. Okay, like if I want to, I can go outside right now. And I mean, it's a little chilly for South Texas. It's a little chilly, uh, but I could st I could put like this on and a t-shirt and and shorts and go outside, and I'm fine. It's like I said, it's a little chilly out there, but it's not. It's not anything that we can't handle, obviously. <laughs> Um, what does that say? Oh, hold on, everybody's putting all kinds of, who won the element? Hold on, man, we'll get there. We gotta do one thing at a time here, man. Uh, Chicago was negative 47 this morning, jeez. No, yeah, uh, pretty much everybody in the Midwest had uh, had snow days, because the snow was insane. Um, in a thing I did, I gave you a shout out. In a thing, what thing, what thing did you do? Now you have to tell us, man. Minnesota was like negative 50. Yeah, it was pretty cold out there, man. So, like I said, I'm not complaining ultra hard. It's, I mean, I, I like I've told you all many times, I live in South Texas. So, yeah, it's it's chilly, but it's not Wisconsin chilly. <laughs> uh, but when the summer comes along, I am going to fully complain to all of you. Because it's going to be like 115 here, and my windows will start melting and then y'all are gonna be like, oh, it's nice and cool up here. And I'm, I'm gonna say, yeah, who cares? Um, but anyways, um, first things first, you're probably wondering about the title. Yeah, the title, a couple things. Uh, you'll probably notice there it's a thermal tank, a thermal take fail. And for those of you who don't know what thermal take is, thermal take is a, um, a computer parts company. They make all kinds of stuff. They make power supply units, they make, um, uh, just all kinds of different stuff. And one of the big things that they make are computer cases. And I bought one of their computer cases. And it was not, I mean, I guess on the grand scale, I mean, there are some very expensive computer cases out there. Like some that will cost you three, four dollars. I mean, those are high end though. Um, but I bought one for 115 bucks. And it was a really nice one. It's like a showpiece sort of uh, case. It's called the P3. And if you actually Google it, in fact, here, I'll bring it up. Where's my, let's see here, thermal, oops, thermal, I cannot spell today. Okay, let me see if I can get y'all some images of it. Okay, here we go. 
Uh, gotta do some stuff here. Bliggity bliggity. Um, let's see. Yeah, that looks fine. Anyways, but yeah, this is, uh, this one right here, I, bet, I guess, is, you know, just the case by itself. You know, very nice looking case. It's a sh it, Like I said, it's a showpiece. And you can use it as a, as a lot of different things. You can use it as a showpiece. You can use it as a, as a test bench. Um, it's open air design, obviously. Uh, it's Like I said, it's not on the cheaper side. It's like a mid-range case. 115 bucks is what I paid for mine. Um, and as you'll see there, most of you all who don't know about computers, you'll see this little bracket right over here where my mouse is. That is a bracket to where you can actually mount your GPU in a vertical stance instead of it just being like, you know, like, actually. Okay, this is an old motherboard, but this is just for show. Okay, so um, you got your motherboard, right? And usually your motherboard goes into your case and then like if you have a video card, it goes in right here. And it's kind of, it looks like it's kind of hanging off the motherboard, but the way this does it is it will let you mount your motherboard like this, but then the GPU will also be mounted vertically, so it looks kind of nice. So you can kind of display it. And um, I had never really cared about that vertical mounting stuff um, until uh, about a week ago. I decided, you know, I'm going to do that vertical mounting stuff. I'm going to do it. Because with the case, you get you have the choice. You can just do standard mount, which is what I've been doing, or you can do the vertical mount. And so I was like, well, you know, it is a showcase, so let's uh, let's do the vertical mounting. And the cool thing is, is that to do the vertical mounting, you need what is referred to as a riser cable. That's what this is. This is a riser cable. So basically, what it does. Again, a bit more. Come here. Again, this is this is not the motherboard I'm using. This this is just an old one. Anyway, so what you do is again you mount it the same way, but the riser card allows you to plug it in, basically right there, and then you know, it's it's like an extension basically. So you can, you know, mount your video card away from your motherboard, but obviously still be able to use it. Well, come to find out, the this is the cable that came with my case. It came looking just like this. Because again, when I first got the case, I this wasn't I wasn't going to do the vertical mounting. So I just basically stuck this in a drawer and left it there. Well, I went back to get it and I put it on. <coughs> Excuse me. Put the computer back together, turn it on and I'm getting artifacts and stuttering and I'm like, "What in the hell is going on?" And the only thing I changed was the orientation of my video card. So I went back and I did some searching around. Apparently, every single one of these stupid cables that came with that case is faulty. Every single one of them. Um, and so I, I sent out a tweet to Thermaltake. I'm like, you know, hey, it sucks. You know, I bought your P3 case and uh, I found out that these cables all have problems. The only problem was is that I bought the case about a year ago. But again, I never, I never used this, so I wasn't aware. It was never a problem for me. Only until last week, when I decided to use it, doesn't work. So I sent them a tweet, and they sent me a message back, which was kind of nice. And they're like, "Hey, thanks for reaching out. What you know? What would you like us to do?" And I'm like, "Well," and I sent them a DM. I said, "Well, it'd be nice if I could get a new cable." Radio silence. Nothing. Nothing back from them. So. Um, Chances are that, yeah, I know this is just a little part of the case, but it still pisses me off because, you know, $115 isn't chump change. You know, I'm not going and spending 40 bucks on a cheap little piece of crap, nothing case. You know, that's good money. And if I pay you $150, $115, I expect your crap to work. This thermal take doesn't work. You need to send me a new one. Well, it's already been a year. I don't care. It's been sitting in a drawer for a year because I haven't used it and the stupid thing doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, so that was a little frustrating. They have not gotten back to me. I doubt they will. If they do, great. You know, but uh, yeah, like I said, I found out online that there's a lot of people that are having the same problems with that stupid cable. Pretty much every single one of the cables that came with this, well, every one of the riser cables that came with these cases like I said, all of them are bad. All of them are bad. So, and for a while, apparently, they were sending out replacements. So I i don't know if maybe I missed the window. Uh, but like I said, just because I didn't use that particular part, 
for so long. Yeah, I'm kind of refreshing my Twitter here. Um, it just, it stinks that now I'm stuck with a riser cable that doesn't work. And those things aren't cheap. It's not like a $3 part. You know, for, for the exact same riser cable from Thermal Take, it's like $35. And I'm like, dude, I don't want to blow $35 on another riser cable that should have worked. So yeah, that, uh, that pissed me off a bit. But, uh, you know, it'd be, again, it'd be nice if they got back to me and said, sure, we'll send you a new cable, but I'm not holding my breath. Anyways, that's my little rant. That's what happens when you buy an upside down table. <laughs> yeah, 30 bucks on new egg. Um, well, the thing is, is that you can actually get, look, here's the thing that a lot of people don't realize, especially if you're not familiar with riser cables, is one, there, there sincerely are different qualities. Some of them are shielded, some of them are not, and it really does matter. You always wanna go with one that has shielding on it because if you get the unshielded, especially for a GPU, it's gonna, it's gonna have horrible, horrible performance. And also they have different lengths, like there are 10 millimeters, uh, 20 millimeters, 30 millimeters, um, just all kinds of different links there. So, um, yeah, it's it's a real pain in the butt. Anyways, so enough of that, enough of me complaining. Now I'm going to go over to Gleam real quick, and we're going to find out who won the card. Where is it? Come here, card. Here it is. The Windrose of the Elemental Lord TCG Yu-Gi-Oh card. Still all nice and shiny and pretty in its case. We're going to find out who the winner is. Because that uh, giveaway ended yesterday. And did we get any additional people enter at the last minute? Let me see. We did. We actually got a few more people. <clears throat> excuse me. That uh, entered right at the last minute. So again, uh, this I actually won't show you because it does show some personal information. And obviously I don't want to accidentally dox anybody. So we're going to take that off. And uh, there was a card. Yeah, dude, it had been going for like a month. It's, you really should check the forum, man. <laughs> Seriously, that's, that's, that's I'm actually feeling kind of down about that. Went through all that trouble and made the forums and everything. We have, let me check here. Let me refresh. Oh, we have 55 people registered on the forum. One person. Seriously, one person has made a comment. One person. Yeah. I'm starting to hate Discord because all the messages that go into Discord could have ended up on the forum where we would have a better record of everything, where everything is organized and it's easier to find out. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> no, I'm not going to let you steal somebody's information. Uh, anyways, so competition has ended now. Um, again, I don't choose the winner. I don't. It's it's done by the RNG by Gleam. So let me see here. Winners. Let's go ahead and see what we got here. Do, 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 do. The winner is Alfonso from Las Vegas, Nevada. Wasn't the last winner from Vegas? I don't remember. I remember doing another one where somebody from Vegas won, I think. But anyways, Alfonso, uh, who I don't think is a regular viewer, but they registered. Uh, let me see, visit and register slumber.com forums. Hey, what do you know? The winning entry came from registering at the forums. Who would have thought? Uh, they are from Las Vegas and they are the winner of the card. So um, I'm going to go and get their information here a little bit later. And uh, we'll uh, get that card mailed out to them probably tomorrow. Uh, let me see. But a temp, you can't post on this channel thing on Discord, so it redirects them to the website. Uh, I, I hate limiting people in that way because some people, like I know myself, if I go to some website and it says, no, you're not allowed to post for like 10 minutes or something, I just leave the website and I never go back. So I would much rather give people the option. You know, it's like, I, hey, it'd be nice if you go over here, guys, but I, I'm not going to, you know, force you to go over there. It'd be nice, though. 
because that's what people want. People want choices. And when you take away people's choices, oftentimes it can really piss them off. And uh, that's the last thing you want to do uh, when you're trying to direct people to something like a website or a forum or something like that. Make me wait 10 minutes to post on your website screen. <laughs> it's true, man. It's very true. Or other times, nowadays, you know what they've been doing lately? And I know this kind of started with Twitter with Twitter. I don't know if they're making newer people still do this, but for a while on Twitter, you they actually restricted people from posting tweets unless they registered an active cell phone number. Couldn't be it couldn't be a home number, it had to be an active cell phone number so that they could then send you a text message with a special code, then you enter the code in and then after that, you're allowed to send tweets. Yeah, I don't I don't want to end up like that. <laughs> I don't want to do that. That's kind of that's kind of insane. Oh man. <laughs> Charlie over on Twitch. I, this is a little late. I I apologize Charlie, but Charlie over on Twitch is like, "Hey, Texas is dangerous. Texas isn't really that dangerous, dude. Texas is actually one of the safer places in America." Seriously, I'm I 100% guarantee you. If I had to choose between living in a city like San Antonio, Dallas, or Houston, compared to other large cities like Chicago <laughs> or New York, I would stay in Texas. Simply because, I mean, I'm not saying they don't have crime. Obviously, every place has crime. Uh, but they have far less crime. And I'm not going to get into a whole gun debate of, oh, it's safer because we have guns. I'm not going to do that. Don't worry. But anyways, <laughs> so um, I guess we're doing the event today, man. Is that what we're going to do? We're going to do turbo deals and that kind of stuff or whatever? I mean, it's, I don't know. So whatever you guys want to do. I already got three Medoras. Man, that same card keeps popping up for me now. Uh, and, and yeah, I, I already had this card, interestingly enough, a different dimension capsule. But yeah, I've already got three of each of the Medoras in the different dimension. Interestingly enough, to this point, I still think I've only gotten... Um, a single opportunity to get the new uh, Arrow Mage Synchro Monster. Uh, it just, it, it will not populate it here for me to get it again, which sucks because it'd be nice to have a second copy. Turner, I got stuck in Platinum this season. Ah, And Primal says still can't hit. What are you at right now, dude? Are you still Legend 1 or are you like at Legend 2 now? The interesting thing is I actually kind of want to go back into ranked just so i can get the new um the new stamps <laughs> you stall it should be okay stall can work yeah plus stalls are a little cheaper to make than some of the other meta decks like uh Kowalkis are a little expensive mass heroes obviously expensive um what was that other one that's going the car car curry i think it is that one takes time to build up Oh, look, it's Dan, the man from England. <laughs> yeah, England. It's a, well, I think he's in England. Well, okay, Dan, what city? Are you actually in London? I never asked. You don't have to. I apologize. You don't actually have to answer that. But are you actually in London? <laughs> I mean, if you're like in a smaller town, I'm not going to ask you to reveal that. Because then, of course, all of, all of Dan's fans are going to go over there and go searching for him. Working on building a standard Arrow Mage deck for the time being. Yeah, Arrow Mage pretty cheap. Well, I knew you were from Wales. I didn't know if you were actually still in Wales. Okay, so you're still in Wales. Okay. I thought maybe you were from Wales, but then moved to London or something. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into, into uh, Ranked. And I'm just going to play like a this like a goofy deck. About to hit the fast lane with Jack actually, let's, let's just... Yeah, let's, I'll just use this one. We'll do that, and uh, then we'll do, like, I don't know, some, uh... oh, 50 gems and 65 victories. And then maybe we'll do some other stuff. Play freshy in ranks. <laughs> yeah, Dan's the Welshman. He speaks, Dan occasionally speaks Welsh to us, and it's kind of interesting. It's really interesting. Like, sometimes Discord's like, no, you can't say any of that. <laughs> because Discord's like, I have no idea what language that is. 
Yeah, at this point, I don't really care about winning. I'm just going to play it out. Because all I really want at this point is just to get the little, uh, whatchamacallits. Don't make me speak Yorkshire. Ooh, Spore. Big guy. Well, he didn't really get much there, huh? I think he gets Spore, doesn't he? Yeah, he gets the Guardiok ability, sends that to the top of his deck if he wants. Oh, okay, so he's going to draw Spore next. Marshall Leaf, huh? Well, he can only run two Marshall Leafs. So he's going to dump Spore again. Ah, that sucks. He's going to break my backfield now. I can speak Taco Bell. <laughs> I'm sure you can. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to send that away. Berg would be nice. Oh, that's fine too. A garden. Well, um... Here, I'll set this just to mess with them. interesting i haven't i haven't run into a sylvan deck and ranked in god it's been a long time man it's been at least six months at least since the summer i think bb has always been a tier one deck buster blader i think buster has really been that good it's just that most people i, I honestly have not really seen a ton of buster decks and ranked which is probably why people aren't aware that it is that good I think I faced maybe one or two Buster decks going from Platinum 1 all the way to King of Games. I think that's it. Ooh, Tuner Time, huh? Then look at a different build to make it more consistent. Ancient Fairy Dragon! Oh, crap. <laughs> He's gonna destroy my my aroma garden. This is interesting. They're not playing a lot of backfield. Botanical lion. Well, let's just clear the field at this point. Well, they can keep bringing the carrot back. I kind of want to throw Rose Lover out there, because I want her in the graveyard anyway. But at the same time, it'd be nice to have the lion out there. Because he's going to pump himself up. All right. Let's get rid of the carrot. And let's get rid of the Marshall Leaf. This is actually an interesting match. <laughs> They're running plants. I'm running plants. There's plants everywhere. I'm waiting for Mystic Tomatoes to show up. I think they know this monster may not hang around very long unless they do something here, too. Because if I draw a Berg, it's going to start getting... Oh, <laughs> I got them to burn a thousand. Nice. <laughs> the only bad thing is that it's removed. It's the only bad thing. Yeah, I can't I can't get it this turn, unfortunately. Because even with Berg, I have to pump it up. Here comes Carrot again. It's gonna take out Rosemary. He made a mistake there. He should have switched that too. He could have taken out my lion as well. Well there's Berg.
Now the question's going to be, here, I'm going to use the Rose Lover here to bring Berg. I don't have to tribute. I gotta check something here. Okay. Set that. Gonna break out the beat down. Yeah, I really need the garden right now. Even just for my turn, because if I don't get it the turn that I play it, they're going to destroy it. But Guess Bog Standard Balance BB. I have no idea what you guys are even saying anymore. I think y'all are talking about like, uh, like, a, like a lake or something. My turn, huh? If I draw the aroma... Uh, that sucks. Yeah, nothing I can do there. Let's see, and that's not a quick effect. Okay. Yeah, I gotta draw a garden. Come on. Damn it. Give me the frickin' garden. Just comparing decks. Okay. He's just holding up here. That may have been a mistake on his part. Hold on, I gotta check something here. Yeah, I think he made a mistake here. Setting that monster was a mistake. Unless it's a high defense monster. It could it actually could be a um, a mushroom. Oh no, wait, no, no, no. He doesn't have any more. Well, he could be running three mushrooms. Yep. Yeah, him, I, or maybe they just wanted to give it up, so they're like, I'll just set a monster let him get it with the bird. That's actually good for me, <laughs> because then I'm one win closer to getting a whole 50 gems. Jack Atlas has appeared. Two DNAs, two Trinades, two Canadias, two Zing Zanzu. A Zing Zanzu! Let me see what he was running. Was he running three mushrooms? He sure was. Herma tree, two carrots, two Marshall leaves, a Merrilies. Hmm. Two Guardi Oak, Lotus Swan. That's an interesting deck, man. That's very monster heavy. And of course, he had this stuff. Yeah. All right, let's see if we can get win This is an interesting start. Uh, do not like starting with two birds. If I had a Rose Lover instead of a Rose Mary, that probably wouldn't have been so bad. Been using the same build for the last three months that's gotten me King Games streams. Oh, he's talking about the oh vampires, dude. Why are you running vampires in in, in Cog, man? That's ugh. I guess. Well, I know Dan. Dan has already oh has already made the decision on this, but I look at it this way: if you're running a deck and it's gotten you King of Games three months in a row. It's very, very much a, it's very much a, um, if it isn't broke, don't fix it type of situation. Okay. 
kind of have to do this, or else these birds are going to be stuck in my hand the entire time. The only bad thing is he's probably got a Canadian or something back there. Go ahead and roll your Canadian. Secret flavor options. But at the same time, getting back to the deck discussion, but at the same time, I see where Rancid's coming from, too. Because, as I've said many times, not everybody plays the same way. Some people are a little more aggressive. Some people are a little more laid back. You know, so maybe making those slight changes uh, would make a, a big difference there. You can each use traps. Oh, you can use spells. Oh, thank you. Sure, I'll send my galaxy over there. Thanks, man. <laughs> He's like, oh, crap. You're on batteries. I rarely see batteries anymore. That's unfortunate. Ah, so he can roll it again. He's going to bring her out again. He's going to use her to dump another card in the graveyard. Which, uh, actually, yeah, Rush is fine. Going to use the second ability. Destroy my other backfield. It won't be an OTK. Uh, but it'll uh, actually maybe it will. Let me see. We got this. Yeah, OTK. That's. I'm actually really surprised somebody was playing vampires when we're already king of games. Like, come on, man. You got to switch to a fun deck, dude. That's like the rule. <laughs> I thought that was the unwritten rule, man. Is that once you get to cog, everybody just plays fun decks <laughs> because it's pointless. <laughs> Unless they're going for the wins, I guess. But I don't know. Maybe they're that desperate. Wants his tickets. I don't even care about the tickets that much. I've had tickets sitting in there for how long now? Cog, where you may face, you know, you you may face an Ojima deck. You might face a vampire deck. Who knows? It's kind of like going back to, kind of like going back to gold. That's not how Cog works. That's not how any of this works. Duel! <laughs> he wants a win badly, yeah. I'm just running Arrow Mage, just for the heck of it. And and also because I'm, I'm using it on Jack simply because I'm trying to level Jack up. Anyways, hmm. Oh, are you serious? It's gonna be one of the situations where. Hold on. Oh, I wonder if it's a cosmic back there. I'm not even gonna use the effect, I'm just gonna attack. I think that's a cosmic back there. Hi, back. I'm Richard. Rex is like, shut up, man. I'm fairly certain he's going to put this down. If he's got a floodgate, he's gonna definitely put it down. Oh, Fluta summoning. Oh. Oh, I know. Does he really want to do that though? Well, I guess it's really. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that definitely makes sense. Here, I'll just gain my five. And I know he's gonna use it. 
More Flutus summoning Karibo. Okay. Yeah, he's just stalling. Well, the, th the thing about Berg is that, I mean, he can... Um, <laughs> this doesn't matter. I don't need an I know what he's going to do. He's just going to Karibo this. He doesn't really want to set his winged Karibo, though. Because if he, if he sets the winged Karibo, he's screwed. Because remember, the winged Karibo, its effect activates after it goes into the graveyard. So if I remember correctly, piercing effects still hurt it. Yeah, here comes the last gamble. Oh, he only got one. That might be all he needs, though. Oh, man, let me see. What is he running? Um... Let me check something here. No, oh, it's not going to let me go into the graveyard. Well, let's activate that. Not that it matters. I think I know what's coming. Um, let's choose dark. <laughs> the big one. <laughs> Oh, it's Kowalki. Are you serious? Kowalki with Karibos. Now he's going to bring the big guy out. I know, right? Well, there's all kinds of different ones. I'm not going to lose here. I don't think. <laughs> okay, yeah, maybe I will. I thought I had a little more life points. Oh, well. I guess everybody's trying their own version of the Quelky. Yeah, somebody posted it the other day. Come on. I don't want to use Masked Hero just so I can get one win. <laughs> It's a Duel Links meta thing. What does that mean? I don't understand what that means. I really don't. It's a Duel Links meta thing? And my hands are cold. Here, enjoy some pops. It means stupid, really? No, actually, I'm just going for 65, because at 65, I get 50 gems. <laughs> If I were really, if I like, if I were really pushing for the wins, then I would just keep rolling with metas. I wouldn't even. I'm just rolling uh, arrow mage right now. Player council thing. You mean the evil cancel? Not really what I wanted. I kind of want to use Berg already, though. Oh, screw it, I'm gonna wait. I don't get it. What's what's the? Uh... You don't get anything at, at that many wins, though. Why would I go for that many wins? Well, there's interesting stuff right there. Based on what I'm doing, he's like, oh, crap. He's running that Cypher Soldier deck. <laughs> you really have no smut. I just kind of grew out of it. Some of that stuff is only funny for so long, and then it's just like... You can only make the joke for, you know, so many years, and then you just, you know, kind of move ahead. We're just going to sit here and keep passing turn. <laughs> Are you serious? It's the same deck. I'm facing the same freaking deck again. Is 
If I could just get the garden, I could win. If I could just get the stupid garden. Give me the damn garden card advance. Yeah. Just give me the garden. Three gardens in there. I just want to draw one. Since it's on Duel Links meta, everybody's everybody's trying it now. Oh, look at this! Obelisk! Let's see, he doesn't have piercing, does he? Let's see, can it be targeted by spells, traps, or card effects? Interesting. Okay, so she'll go away. There's the garden. The great thing here now is, well, the thing is he's running Karibo. So this is going to suck if he's running Karibo. Well, wait, hold on. Um, yeah, if, if, crap. If he's running Karibo, then I'm going to lose my Berg. That sucks. Now, that's the thing. If he's got Karibo, like a Sphere Karibo, then I'm in trouble anyway. man <laughs> as soon as he saw beat down he was like oh crap <laughs> so which is worse um i think for hires were probably pretty bad simply because they were so easy to build whereas kowalki no kowalki took a little while before it took off whereas fur hires they they were just suddenly there and they were so easy to build They were so darn easy to build, man. There's Kowalkis, you know, they came out a few boxes ago and they weren't that good. And now just with this box, they're much better. Okay, so this whole, okay, this whole deck is built around his God card. Dark World dealings, flutes, card advances, patents. Interesting, that's an interesting build. Time to gather up all my gems. <clears throat> yeah, it's gonna be one of those kind of, you know, people. Well, people are very. I don't see. Here's the thing: people are too quick to call a deck cancer. That when a seriously cancerous deck comes around, and they call that cancer, then nobody pays attention to them. Because I've seen people that, you know, any deck that they lose to, or they just can't manage to get past, they're oh, it's cancer. Well, it's not necessarily cancer, it's just you can't figure it out. Gotta be careful, man. Sometimes you use a word war far too often and then it loses all of its meaning. Kind of like It's kind of like saying that everybody is special. If everybody is special, then nobody is special. Because we're all equal. We're all the same. Anyways, let's go open our packs. <laughs> We're going to open some packs here. I'm still, <laughs> speaking of Kowalkis, I'm still trying to get the diamond. <laughs> yeah, seeing as how it's, oh yeah, it's definitely driving box cells. And this is a main box too, so it'll be a little while. Justice Bringer again. Ugh, I keep getting that stupid card. Well, no diamond this time. Oh, well, there's the wall. I actually did need a wall. <laughs> Obviously. So there you go. Got the wall now. 
And now we just need one more diamond. But even then, with all those, you know, the various, you know, Karibo versions and all that stuff, maybe I don't need another diamond. Who knows? But the only thing about this is, and I, th I think we can all agree, I actually saw a video kind of addressing this sort of thing about, you know, quote unquote, breaking the game, is that when you released, you know, an archetype or a card that works with another card in a very specific way, that it breaks the game to the point to where the game isn't fun anymore. And that's very true because, you know, the only thing that's kind of keeping the game a little interesting right now is that there are several archetypes that, you know, are at least somewhat good. Like vampires are obviously still viable, masked heroes, Koki, uh, Karakari or Karakur, whatever those are called. So there's several archetypes that are at least keeping things interesting. But... Again, you know, every time you run into a Kowalki deck, you just automatically think, oh, crap, one turn kill again. And the crap thing is, is there's really nothing you can do about it. Unless you happen to have something, you know, once they start getting that combo rolling, if you don't have anything to immediately stop it when it starts, it just, yeah, <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> I sincerely hope they find a way to better balance this stuff. Because some of this stuff is just, uh, yeah. Well, we're going to go face Jack <clears throat> in the uh, vomit-inducing turbo duels. <clears throat> has Atomic finally beaten me? No, Atomic has not beaten me yet. He will eventually, once he gets more cards. But he will. <clears throat> Ready, set, duel! I'll be quiet, Jack. Oh, I'm going first. Okay, um, we're going to just take a chance here. <laughs> Let's see, what do I get for, oh no, I don't want to activate, hold on. For five or four, 200, okay, that doesn't matter. So the big one you really, I guess you really want is is eight, because that's the one I've been using. I'm like, well, I guess ten if you're in, in deep doo doo. <laughs> the only problem with ten is that it says destroy one card your opponent controls. Is I would much rather it be something that would get you back into the duel, other than making you that much more dominant in the duel. And the reason I say that is because if you're able to get up to ten. Because remember, whenever you, whenever one of your monsters is destroyed, you lose a point. You know, when a monster you, contr you control is destroyed, you lose a point. So obviously, if you're already getting up to 10, then you're probably being at least fairly dominant in the game. So I, I don't really agree with this one. This one makes sense, though. Eight to draw a card. That I don't like. I think it's kind of dumb. Mirror, please make that deck. <laughs> well, I'm really only one card away from making the Qualky deck. And think of it this way, guys. If you want, the next time we're doing metas, I can play it in the duel room. <clears throat> and you guys, uh, if you choose to, ooh. If you choose to, I can play it against you all so you all can practice. And then I can practice using it too. Because I know I haven't seen any, really any of you all use the Qualky decks. Have y'all? I don't remember. Uh, let's see. We'll do this. At 12 before multiply times with no monsters not <laughs> Okay. So we're gonna switch her. Because I want to protect her this time. Galaxy. That's actually a really good draw. Ah, crap. We're gonna chainable. I'm actually going to burn my 8 and draw a card here. Is that this one? This one. That's actually not bad. Yeah, look at that dude. He's pumped.
Given what I just did, I probably should have switched his. I could have won that turn. Oh, well, that's all right. Oh, <laughs> Francis, like, seriously, Dan, it's boring. I imagine it probably is boring. It's one of those decks that... Hmm. I mean, I guess since it's part of the meta, we all have to figure out how to beat it. But at the same time, you know, every time you see it, it's like you know it's not going to really be a fun game. <laughs> so you're just like... <sighs> All right, Jack, how much longer you got? Jack Atlas. Uh, he actually doesn't have that much more. I'm going to do some auto duels. Just let him try and win real quick. We'll just do two because I want to get max rewards. Ugh, Dragoonity is still viable. You know, Dragoonity was, at least in ranked, I saw Dragoonity for like three days. And then I haven't seen it since. In ranked. I know Trax plays it. Trax has that deck. But in ranked... Like I said, I only saw it for a few days, and then after that, it just kind of went away. I think what may have happened is that a lot of people who were playing Dragoonity, they saw that the Kowalki deck was suddenly amazing, and they're like, well, let's go to Kowalki now. <laughs> so that's what they did. I almost never see it. I, seriously, I don't see it. The last time I saw it was when I played Trax. You have Jack Atlas maxed. Well, I'm only trying to get him to 29. That's it. After that, if he'll just level on his own. Yeah, the power creep has been a little weird. It's a bit much now. I'm sure all of us can agree that when we're constantly facing decks that have you know one turn kill potential, that things need to be rebalanced. I mean, I understand why they did just the 4,000 life points, because they wanted the duels to be faster. They wanted them to be much faster. They didn't want you to sit there for 20 minutes doing one duel, even though that sometimes happens still. But, um, yeah, I mean, it just uh, there's far too many instances where people are just one turn killing. It's, it just gets boring. Or, heck, just like the other day, when there was a couple of times where I had people on the ropes big time, and... They didn't just, they didn't eventually come back to win. They one turn killed me the very next turn, which is like, well, I did everything right for, for, for seven or eight turns. And now suddenly they just happen to draw the one card they need and their entire combo goes off and lose. That's, that could be disheartening, man. It really can. It makes, I mean, in fact, a lot of people have been, I don't know if you guys follow Hearthstone. I don't play Hearthstone that much anymore. But when I used to play it a bit more, it was I noticed that that sort of stuff was kind of happening a little bit more and more as they changed up the mechanics. And people are starting to say that now, that um, Hearthstone is getting like that to the point where, you know, they're all everybody's playing the same decks. The power creep is stupid. Nobody wants to buy in anymore. Because I mean, and Hearthstone is expensive. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you can play it free and you can earn packs over time, but again, it's like Duel Links, you know, you can either, well, here's the thing, it's not actually like Duel Links, Duel Links is a little more generous, whereas with Hearthstone, I think you end up getting like 10 packs for free, but then after that, you slowly earn packs over time, um, but of course, you know, with Duel Links, you can buy practically, you know, two or three boxes in the first couple of weeks that you play just from playing the game from all the gems. But Hearthstone's not like that. After that, you have to really start shelling out money to get uh, to get more packs. And sometimes there are cards there that are just game-breakingly stupid. Uh, in fact, I saw a video the other day that um, was talking about one of the game-breaking uh, mechanics that are, that's going on now with one particular card. Um, 
But there is a mechanic, in case you're not aware of it, in Hearthstone called Battle Cry. And basically what it is, is, is Battle Cry, uh, it states it on the card, and then right after that it has a particular effect. And, like, it'll say, like, Battle Cry, draw two cards, or Battle Cry, uh, your opponent loses three health and you gain three health. Stuff like that. Um, and there's a card, I forget the name of it, I'll have to look it up again. But it's a late game card, it costs nine mana to get out. Um, and, but the thing is, once you get it out on the field, its effect is to go back through your entire graveyard since the beginning of the game and reapply every single battle cry effect that has gone off since the game started. And because it costs nine mana, you only get one mana uh, per turn. Basically, you start at one, the next turn you get two, the next turn you get three, and so on and so forth. So you have to go a certain number of turns before you can actually get this card out. So it costs nine mana, and it lets you redo every single battle cry that you had pl uh, played up until that point in the game. And there's another card that people are comboing it with that it allows you to duplicate that nine mana card as a separate token, but it keeps all of its effects. So once it hits the field, it replays all the battle cries you've done throughout the game, including its own ability to duplicate itself, which then causes it to redo all the battle cries again, which again causes it to duplicate itself, which again goes through all the battle cries again. You see where I'm going with this. There you go, Shutterwalk. That's it. That, <laughs> God, man, that, it's so stupid. That was just this, I mean, I understand they're trying to do different stuff in that game, but my God, that was just the stupidest thing I had ever seen. Yeah, they nerfed it. They finally nerfed it. But then, again, the video that I was watching, the guy comes up and, and makes a very valid point. Some people um, literally spent hundreds of dollars trying to get that card. And, you know, you finally get... Because it's a hard-to-get card. It's not something you just... Oh, there it is. No, it's a very, you know, rare card. And um, people were having a difficult time getting it, so they were jump dumping all types of money to get it. And now they took the card and they basically eroded it and nerfed it. So now you now he was asking the question. It's a very legitimate question. You know, people who've put in hundreds of dollars into the game to get that one card, since Blizzard went back and redid the way the card works, after they had already dumped hundreds of dollars into the game to get it, does Blizzard really owe them anything? And that's a really good question. Some people are like, no, it's entertainment which kind of makes sense. But at the same time, if it didn't have that mind-blowing effect to begin with, it's a very good argument that people would have never spent that much money on, you know, on trying to get the card. They would have never blown, say, $200 to try and get it. Oh, and good night, Dan. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think that's kind of... Uh, I don't know, man. It, it, it kind of brings up this whole thing of you know, digital card games as a whole. Because, let's face it, I mean, we've all spent money on Duel Links. And the bad thing that I don't like about it is that the game could go away tomorrow and all the money that we've put into it is gone. We have nothing to show for it other than the fact that it was an entertainment product. Yeah, I get that, but still. So, I don't know, man. Because at least with... At least with Yu-Gi-Oh! the card game, at least I have, you know, at least I have these. Like, if I stop playing tomorrow, okay, for instance, if you're playing Hearthstone and you've put in hundreds of dollars and then something changes and you don't like it and you stop playing, that's it. That money's gone. But if I am playing Yu-Gi-Oh! or if I'm playing, you know, Magic the Gathering, uh, if I decide, oh, I don't want to play anymore, I still have the cards that I can sell. Whereas with digital card games, you don't have that. And that really bums me out. Because there's, you know, some, I think it was Artifact, was it, that allowed you to kind of cash out? And the weird thing was, is that they did, they, they fumbled up that whole launch so badly that Artifact was pretty much dead. <laughs> so that was bad. Yeah, you could sell your account, but 
the thing about that a tran is that again if i like say for instance i have literally tens of thousands of magic the gathering cards if i decide to stop playing nothing says i immediately have to sell all ten thousand of my cards i can just sell a handful you know and maybe just make off with a little tidy profit maybe keep a few in the background just in case i decide to come back with dual links if you sell your account you're selling everything it's either all or nothing so if i you know if i stop playing dual links for a few months and decide well i don't want to play anymore and i sell the account yeah sure i get you know however much money i get for it but if Later on, I decide, well, you know, I'm going to play Duel Links again. Now I have to start over from the very beginning. You know, and if, again, some people have spent hundreds, even thousands of dollars on their accounts. So it's it would be very hard to go and start all over again. Yeah, you would now have the foresight of knowing how the, the system works and all that. But still, I mean, all those, you know, the special event cards, you know, you, you'll have to wait for those events to possibly come around again. And, you know, all the other great cards that you had, they're, they're all gone, you know? Whereas with, you know, a physical card game, again, like I said, you don't have to sell everything. You can just sell bits and pieces. With with a Duel Links or Hearthstone or with whatever online card game you got, if you sell your account, it's all gone. And I seriously doubt that the person who now has your account is going to be like, oh yeah, sure, you want to play again? Here's your account back. For the same amount of money that you initially sold it to me as. No, no one's ever going to do that. Ooh, look at this. What's this? What do we got? Yeah, some of the, exactly. Some of the events are discontinued. They don't come back. And so you'll have to wait for them to go back and find other ways to re-release those cards that were previously available. And I'm not saying this is a bad card. It's just not what I'm looking for. Yeah, I just... I feel like... Like, online card games like this should be much cheaper. Simply because... Like I said, there... I mean, there, there is nothing you can... I mean, once that money is spent, that money's gone forever. Is U-Bell discontinued? Um... I think... Generally, what they've done, from what I've seen, is they will run an event three times before they retire it. ubell has been around twice, so I think they might do that event one more time. So she's not, I mean, the event itself is not retired yet. Like I said, they do them each about three times, unless it's like one of those events that are just, you know, constantly kind of coming in and out. Like if it's, if it's a character driven event, then they usually do them three times. But like a non-character driven event, like the KC Cup or the Duelathon, um, they'll just kind of bring those back whenever they may throw a character into it here and there um, but uh, usually like i said if it's um if it's driven by a character they usually just bring it back twice like yeah we have jack now but this is only the second time he's been around uh, so they'll do his event one more time and then they'll probably retire it after that Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking since they've only done two U-Bell events, they might do a third. Just to give us all an opportunity to get additional copies of the other two U-Bell cards. Probably how they're going to do it. Why what? Oh, there's all... I didn't even realize that. Okay, yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, because there's some stuff that was released with the the tune event that you can only you could only get through that event, I believe. Really, only one? Are you sure? I thought she had two, or it, whatever it is. Oh boy. I guess War Bell came back at least once more. Toon Barrel Dragon? Yeah, Toon Barrel Dragon would be kind of neat. I'd probably never use it, but again, it's one of those cards that's just neat to have it. And Esperoba, interestingly enough, he had the Esperoba Carnival, 
I think that's been here twice, right? Is it twice? I, I honestly don't remember. I'm talking to y'all so much that I'm screwing up here in the match. <laughs> I switched my Rosemary back before I was ready, and then I realized, I was like, oh, crap. Toon Dark Magician Girl. Yeah, that should be kind of neat to have. Synchro Boost. Oh my gosh, two Synchro Boosts. Get out of here. Damn, now I really need Rosemary. Or ja Ooh, Jasmine. Oh, man. Piercing battle damage. Come on, give me a Berg. Damn. That's actually not terrible. I, mean, I really don't want to burn a galaxy on that. Oh, that's right. This is only for um, face downs. Well, here's to hoping he summons another monster. Okay, oh, he's gonna. Oh, no, wow, he didn't synchro summon. That's amazing, thank you. You did me a huge favor. Two cards. Come on, give me a berg. That's not a berg. <laughs> Dang it, come on. I just want a freaking berg. And I can't win. Floodgate. Yeah, I can be aggressive here. Couldn't you crash into the 28 beat stick? Why would I want to? Do I want to? Yeah, let's put it down. Still hoping for Berg. I've got three Bergs in there and ten cards. Come on. Oh, I'm sorry, two Bergs. And I get to draw a couple more. Come on, one of these has to be a Berg. <laughs> Come on. Let me see. That Resonator, what did he... What's his defense? Three? Okay. I have exactly what I have exactly enough though. He's gonna survive that. He's gonna die from this, and then I get to attack with the rose love. Oh, I didn't even see that. The mad arc fiend. Man, I keep getting that stupid lancer. I've already sold some of these. I need more of that dragon. <laughs> the more you know. <laughs> uh, I ain't got time for that. <sighs> <sighs> I keep forgetting that I have a store set up on the website. You all don't see it. There's no link to it there. But I have a store set up. And uh, if I really wanted to, I could populate it and let you all go buy cards. Like physical cards. They wouldn't be cheap. Sell Mirror Force for five hundred dollars each. All the way to twenty six in one stream? No, I did not. Here for. Well, the thing though is that if I sell physical cards, I can only really sell. Well, I can sell anywhere I want, but I don't really want to sell overseas because um, the shipping gets a bit expensive. And I don't really want to, you know, ask anybody, you know, if they buy one card to pay $5 for shipping because. You know, if you buy one card, shipping for that card should be maybe like a buck at the most. 
you know, because that would cover an envelope, a stamp, uh, a hard plastic case, and that's about it. <laughs> I want to do this. I didn't want to bring out botanical lines so soon. Yeah, Cyber well, Cyberstein got banned ultra quick because it was it was basically a one turn kill. And they did not want that. In fact, I think I've still the, the, told the story once or twice. They Cyberstein came out and literally days later he was banned. If I remember correctly, he came out in Dark Beginning 1. I don't know, man. I remember it being really quick, because people didn't want to see Cyberstein. Well... I guess if you look at the time in which it was officially launched, because um, I remember that Cyberstein officially first came out as um, as a Shonen Jump Championship prize card. So if you base it on that date, in which there was literally like two Cybersteins in the world available, um, then yeah, it was a few months. But if you base it on when it came out in Dark Beginning 1, that's different. <laughs> Because let's face it, most people who bought, the, or not bought, but most people who won those Cybersteins, they didn't play them. They either sold them or just held on to them. I, I think they've exchanged hands quite a bit now at this point. But yeah, those first Cybersteins, nobody really played them. I do remember one guy who, um, when Shrink was the Shonen Jump Championship card, he actually took it out and played with it. That was insane. I'm like, dude, what? <laughs> come on, man. You're playing with you're playing with a, easily a thousand dollar card at least. But yeah, he he he. There, I think if I remember correctly, it came in this thick plastic case, and he cracked it out and stuck it in a sleeve and played with it. Everybody was like, really, man? <laughs> come on. He's like, I don't care. You might care now, man. The championship series. I, I've seen a handful of the championship series cards because I, I judged a few of the Shonen Jump championships. And one of the cool things is that, of course, the organizer comes over and says, hey, guys, here's your chance to take a look at it. And we get to help hold it and all that. People would take some of the judges would take pictures with certain stuff. It's just kind of neat, you know, just to hold it, even though it's not yours. But yeah, it was kind of neat. There is that one card, I forget her name. Uh, is she an XYZ monster? I can't remember exactly what her name is, but she's really expensive. She's one of the most expensive, um, not, well, it's not called Shonen Jump Championship anymore. It's called, uh, what is it? Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship Series is what they call it now. He got all three heads on Sand Gambler. Oh my God. <laughs> Good luck with that, man. Gold sarcophagus that got stolen? I don't remember that. I, I sincerely do not remember that. Damn, I should have attacked with Jasmine and then used the rush. I 
Oh, it would, doesn't matter. He doesn't have enough life. Still. Pot of greed. <laughs> I mean, well, some cards find their way back into circulation. Heck, Mo Monster Reborn. It's back. Stratus is back. Rageki. <laughs> the winner's bag got stolen. It was one of two golds. So oh, no. I've seen that sort of thing happen before, though. And I've actually been the head judge in a couple of events where people who were doing really good in the in the event, thankfully, they were only regionals. <laughs> they weren't shown in jump championships or anything. But yeah, I was I remember one particular regional. In fact, it was in Houston the day before we had the Shonen Jump Championship. And then the next day they were having the finals of that championship. But then they asked if I wanted to be the head judge of the regional that was going on the next day. And I was like, sure, I'll do the regional. So I didn't judge the finals of that championship, but I was the head judge for the regional. And there was a guy, and the, and the, the sucky thing was is I knew him. We were, I wouldn't say we were great friends, but we were friendly. I'd seen him at several events and all that. And he was actually from Austin. So I knew who he was. And he was like six and oh, and uh, it was only eight rounds. It was only an eight round event. And he was, he was six and oh at the time. And he was about to, we were going into the seventh round and somehow, some way between the sixth and seventh round, somebody, uh, somebody stole his deck box with his entire deck, his side deck, all of it, all completely gone. And man, he was like, dude, can't you do something? I'm like, what am I going to do, man? <laughs> uh, he's like, well, you're the head judge. I'm like, I, I can't just go digging through every single person's bag, man. But we actually got a tip from somebody who says, yeah, we saw this person stole it. And then another person came and said they saw the same thing. And so then we had cause. So me and another judge, along with a couple of random Set. spectators, so we Duel. could say we had witnesses, um, we even asked them, we're like, guys, we, we need to ask you to you know, to crack open your bags. We got we have to, we have to look. They're like, are you all cops? And we're like, no, but we believe that you've stolen something. And since you're here at our event, so we went through all their stuff and I don't know if they passed the deck box onto a friend of theirs or what, but there were these two guys and they had been suspect the entire weekend. And yeah, there was nothing we could do. There was, there were none of his cards were in there. We searched through their binders. We searched through all the different places in their backpack. We searched through their deck boxes. His his deck was gone. And he was so devastated, he just dropped. Because he, because he was 6-0 and oh at the time, he, wa he was going to make it to the finals. Even if he had lost the next two rounds, he was going to make it to the finals. I just felt so bad for the guy. Because there was nothing we could do. Yeah, he was pretty pissed. But the interesting thing was is that that was only one of like five or six thefts that weekend. In fact, the very first theft came before came before on the Saturday, uh, even before the Shonen Jump Championship first match got started. Rest in peace, the chat. Yeah, everybody went away. <laughs> yeah, you got. That's the thing, man. There's there's always people there with sticky fingers. I hate that. I hate it so much. The first, like I was, like I was saying there, before the first match in the Shonen Jump Championship even got started uh, that day, there was a guy who had stolen a, a handful of cards from this kid. Who, interestingly enough, um, he would sleeve his cards and then he would put little stickers on the corner of the card and number them. And so, basically, this guy had stolen those kids cards out of his deck box and so when people were like yeah it was that guy it was that guy we went and we searched him and the way we caught him was the kid even before we searched that other guy's stuff he was like i know they're mine because all of mine are in white sleeves and they're all numbered and we're like what do you mean and he's like i put little stickers on the outset of my sleeves and i put little numbers on all of my decks uh, all my deck cards so they're not actually on the cards but they're on the sleeves and he's like that's how you'll know they're my cards we go in there, sure enough, number, it was like number eight, 12, just like some random numbers, but he was like, yep, white sleeves, all numbered in the corner, exactly as he said. 
And when we, when we finally said, so what do you got to say about this kid? The guy was just like... So we called the police. <laughs> we called the cops and... Um, I think they gave him a ticket and then, of course, we threw him out. So we caught that guy, thankfully. But yeah, there were, there were other ones where, you know... You just, you gotta watch your cards, man. You gotta watch your cards. I remember every single time that I would go to events and I wasn't judging, as soon as I was done playing, like as soon as my matches were over, I immediately stuck them back in my backpack. And every single place I went, I had my backpack in front of me. Or if I were sitting down, I had my backpack between my legs. So nobody could get to them. But, uh, you know, not everybody was as smart as that. And so they got their stuff stolen. I've seen people not only get decks stolen, but like their entire binders, like entire, like thick binders like this, just full of cards, gone, just gone, man. Well, no, here's the thing, Charlie, Charlie's over on Twitch, in case y'all are wondering. Here's the thing, Charlie, I've also been a judge in World of Warcraft TCG and Versus, uh, Marvel versus DC, the old Versus game. And in those events, I went to like three World of Warcraft events and two versus system, and they had the same problems. And those were older players. They were, well, they weren't much, much older, but they were like compared to the average age back in the day, I would say it was like 16 years old for Yu-Gi-Oh! For versus and for World of Warcraft, they were all adults. They were all clearly adults. And maybe some older teenagers, like 18, 19 year old. But yeah, every single event, I've never judged Magic, so I can't say, but I have gone to a couple of Magic events. Same problem. There are always people in all those events when little pieces of cardboard like this are worth, in some cases, several dollars or even more, depending on what it is. There's always going to be people with sticky fingers. Always, man. And now I'm chilling on casual rights. <laughs> People are just, you know, Charlie says, what the F is wrong with people? That's all right. Don't worry about it, Charlie. Um, some people are, you know, they got sticky fingers, man. Just how they are. Like, whenever I used to host my events, we used, I used to host my events at this place called North Cross Mall that unfortunately no longer exists. But when I would go, I would have my laptop. I would have my PA system, which is public announcement in case you're not aware. I'd have a big giant speaker and I had a ton of cards that I would bring with me. Uh, because I was an organizer at the time, occasionally I would get little, I guess, little care packages from Upper Deck and they would send me like a stack of a hundred, you know, Duelist League cards or something. And I would over time eventually dish them out to people. And I can't tell you how many times where I would be there with all my stuff and I had a few trusted friends that would always hang out with me. They played too, but they would always come and hang out. And there was always occasionally, you know, it was like every like every other weekend, there'd be some kid that we didn't know who he was. And he'd sit there and he'd just stare at my stuff and just have that look in his eye. And we knew, we we're just like, we gotta keep an eye on that kid. Because more often than not, and I would even announce it beforehand. I'd be like, just make sure y'all keep an eye on your stuff. Because thankfully, at most of my events, nothing ever got stolen. But I think the only time something actually got stolen um, was, disappointingly, a guy that I knew. And he was a regular. I don't know why, but I guess one weekend he just got brave. And he stole several cards from this young kid. And I'm talking like he was like eight or nine years old. And this guy was like a 24-year-old dude. And he stole a bunch of these cards from this kid. And we found out that it was him, too. Because he was stupid enough, he, he stole the cards, left, and then went and told one of our, um, somebody else that was in our circle of friends. And they came and they told me, they're like, yeah, dude, so-and-so stole that kid's cards. Because the kid noticed, obviously. And he's like, yeah, so-and-so stole his cards. And I was like, are you serious? And he's like, yeah, he just told me. And then the next weekend, I, I approached him. I was like, dude, what the hell, man? Why would you do that? And he was just like, I don't know, man. I just wanted to. And I pissed him off after that because I told him to F off and I kicked him out. And he, I, he was like, really? And I go, dude, you stole, man. That's the rule. You still, you get the hell out of here, dude. And you never come back. And the weird thing was, is it was a little awkward at times because, again, when I would travel and do regionals and stuff like that, uh, I would still see him occasionally. 
And he'd come up to me, like, he'd be like, hey, and I'd be like, don't even look at me, man. That disgusts me, dude. You know, I've heard of people stealing before, and, you know, if you, st like, if there's a homeless guy and you steal a hot dog, I get it. You know, you're hungry, you're poor, you're homeless. But if you're a 24-year-old man and you go and you steal from an 8-year-old kid, that's just smutty, dude. That's just... Man, that, I... <laughs> That's disgusting, dude. It really is. Can't believe people do that crap. But yeah, I never, I never forgave him. To this day, I, and the thing is, I, I still talk to some of the people that I used to hang out with back in the day on Facebook, and I still see him from time to time in various threads, like we're talking about card games or whatever. I still see him there commenting, and I still remember to this day. I still haven't forgiven him, man. You just, you just don't do that stuff, dude. It's just wrong. I mean, obviously it's wrong to steal, but what made it even worse is that he stole from a kid. Like, who does that, man? Literally, or let me not literally, figuratively took candy from a baby. <clears throat> Let's see. Rancid says, see, that's why I love playing in Sheffield. The Team Patriot lads looked after the little kids. See, that's the thing, is that where I was, that was kind of how it was. Like, the parents trusted me because I was one of, I wasn't older or the oldest, but I was in my 20s. And um, the parents would come and they knew me. I knew them all. And they trusted that, that I would at least try to look after their kids if I could. Like, whenever new, younger kids would come into the events... I, I would, you know, watch after them and make sure that they were getting fair trades and stuff like that, that nobody was ripping them off. And I would even tell them, like, hey, if you have questions, you come talk to me. Like, if you don't know if you should do this trade, you come talk to me and I'll tell you if it's fair or not. And they're like, okay, okay. And I had to get in there a few times because, let's face it, when there's a new player around, there's always going to be somebody looking to take advantage. You know one thing that is worse than a stealer? Um... A nasty, dirty old man. <laughs> Did I play? I play, I started playing in 2001, and I played all the way up until about 2007, 2008. Somewhere around there. And then uh, my wife at the time made me quit. I hated it. I hated quitting. I so freaking hated it. And the reason why she made me quit, it, it was kind of strange, too, because I maintained a regular job throughout that entire time. But I still went and did the events, one, because they were fun. And two, because, I mean, I would get compensated. I, sometimes I'd get paid cash from the store owners or from the uh, tournament organizers, or they'd pay me in in product, which was fine. It was usually a combination of the two. Plus, they'd pay for my lodging, my gas, my food, all that. Everything got paid for. So that's why I loved doing it. And I made so much money just reselling the product that I was given. Like, sometimes we'd get special... Um, uh, like when I did one of the World of Warcraft, um, the very first World of Warcraft TCG Dark Moon Fair in real life, there was an actual Dark Moon Fair. Uh, I went to the first and I was I was a scorekeeper, and part of my package was if you've ever played World of Warcraft, there was a card uh, called Saltwater Snapjaw. I actually still have the card around here somewhere, but um, the one the version that I got had a special code on it that you could enter in, and in the actual online game World of Warcraft, it gave you um, the green riding turtle, which at the time was selling for like 250 bucks. That was just one of a handful of really great things that I got. I mean, I've, I've gotten so many, you know, multi hundred dollar cards from doing events like that. I was surprised when I guess she was, her argument was, well, you're always away all the time. You're always going out of town. And I'm like, yeah, but you know why we have so much money? <laughs> We have so much money because I'm doing these events. <laughs> and so I stopped doing the events and like six months later, you know, I mean, we're still okay, but obviously, you know, I mean, I used to spoil, I used to spoil my ex-wife too. I'd give her money for like to go do her hair and her nails, that kind of thing. And then I stopped doing that. And she's like, you have been giving me money lately. I go, yeah, because I no longer have any extra money because I don't do the Yu-Gi-Oh events anymore. And she's like, oh, and that was it. That was the end of the conversation. <laughs> But yeah, I never was able to get back into it. So that kind of sucked. Atomic says he lived by Sheffield. 
I imagine Sheffield is somewhere in England. Is that right or is that wrong? Where's Sheffield? Come on, y'all gotta tell me. I don't want to go look this up. It's too much work. Boom show sign <laughs> reading child stealer. <laughs> somebody that, now, now, child stealer, is that somebody that steals from a child or somebody that steals children? <laughs> dude, there's too much to scroll up, dude. Because, I mean, you don't you don't see it over there on YouTube, but I, I'm... This is a common... The, the, the chat that I use combines Twitch chat, Mixer chat, uh, Streamcraft chat, and YouTube chat all into one. So it's a nice, huge thing. So it's not necessarily easy for me to just scroll back up. Although I guess I could open up YouTube on its own. Hold on, let me let me open up YouTube. Let me see. Uh, what's the best level to farm cards at the gate? Um, the best level to farm. There really isn't one. Uh, well, okay, there is, but it's gonna be a bit. I mean, obviously, the higher the level, the more likely that you are to get, you know, the rarer cards. Um, if you face the level 40 version, your chances are much higher than if you face the level 10. Now, of course, obviously, if you face the level 10, uh, they're very easy to beat. Um, I usually only face the level 10s when I'm trying to just get through matches really quickly just to get experience. But if I actually want to... Um, let's see. Oh, my, my points are bigger. But if I actually want to get cards from them, then I face the level 40s. I usually use a meta deck so I can make sure that I win because I don't want to waste keys. And then I go and I play the level 40s. But I only do the X2. I don't do the X3 because X3 sometimes, all depending on your dual assessment, you may actually be dumping or giving away uh, some of the uh, chests. So I only do X2. Yeah, see, so that's the thing. Level 10, yeah, they're easy to get by, but... Uh, think of it like this, um, like say for instance, if you face a level 10, and, and I don't know if these numbers are right, but this is kind of how it works. Um, if you face a level 10 and you win, the chances of you getting any rare card is say 5%. But if you face level 20, then it jumps up to 10%. If you face a level 30, 15% and level 40, 20% and so forth. It, it gets, it's, it's obviously, you know, the chances of you getting the card you want or at least a card that's somewhat decent is definitely better if you face a level 40. But of course, the level 40s are a bit harder. Ooh, that dragon looks angry. I'm sorry, you're going away. Now, the one thing about playing the level 40s, though, is um, <clears throat> oftentimes when you play versus, especially when you're playing the versus the AI, think of it in the in this way. Um, any time that the UI, like if you're playing against the UI, any time that they have the opportunity to activate an effect, even if it doesn't benefit them, they will activate it. Like, say, for instance, um, if I'm playing against, you know, Jack, and... He has two face down cards, one of them being a floodgate. And he has a big monster, like a 19 attacker monster. Then suddenly it's my turn. And if I summon like a Rose Lover, which only has 800 attack, which is obviously a weaker monster, he's still going to use the floodgate simply because it's there to be used. So the AI is not really that smart. So once you figure out those little things that the AI does that don't necessarily make sense to us, you can use that to your advantage to make them kind of burn through some of their cards. Like again, if I summon a Rose Lover and he burns a Floodgate on it, that's advantageous to me ultimately. Because, you know, one, he puts my monster in defense and two, I get him to burn a Floodgate on a useless monster. <laughs> or at least at the time, a useless monster. It doesn't, they, they don't necessarily do it all the time, but they do like to do it. Same thing when you give a deck to your AI. Like if you just let it auto duel. Oh wow, another pack. If you just let it auto duel, again, if they summon, like, like here, I'll give you a good example. Um, 
Who can I use? Uh, let me think here. Who has a very defensive deck? Oh, Odian. I'll teach you to stay out of the waters. I'll use Odian. I pledge my now again, just in I case you all don't remember, this is the, a very defensive moments. type deck. Okay, I don't generally attack with it, although I can. But again, if you just look at the deck, you see what it's supposed to do. If it will load. <laughs> there you go. Anyways, you got floodgates, you got you know Paleozoics, walls, spike shields. You know you got all this stuff. Most of it defensive. Occasionally you can attack with some of the stuff, but for the most part, you know, like say for instance, I would generally set this monster. If I have a spike shield, great. Same thing with this. I would set it in spike shield, great. All that stuff. Let me see if I can get him to do an auto duel, and let's see if he does anything that's a bit peculiar. Again, he does. They don't do it all the time, but they do occasionally do stuff that makes you go hmm you know like what <laughs> here in fact we'll make him face this guy monster effects cannot be used oh gosh this will be interesting here i'll let him auto duel and again i don't know if he'll do anything weird but he might and sometimes it's that one weird thing that he does that just completely ruins the way the deck is supposed to be let's see let's see what he does okay <laughs> Uh, okay, that actually makes sense. I probably would have done that too. Ooh. <clears throat> Paleozoic. That makes sense. Okay, he's actually doing pretty good here. That, wow, he's actually doing great! <laughs> <laughs> He's actually doing really amazing. Okay. This time around, the AI actually did exactly what he was supposed to do. Okay, good. Good job, Odian. <laughs> you made all the right moves there. Of course, you know what? I'm trying to give you the one example. Odian's like, nah, I want to do everything right this time. <laughs> Let's see. I want to put him against a... No, I don't care. I want to put him against... Another uh, NPC here and see what he does. Oh, here, we'll put him against Rex. Level 40. Okay. We'll see. Econ twice in the same turn. That, I've had that happen to Rancid, where just because it's there in their hand, it's like they feel like they have to play it. It's like they'll Econ a monster in defense mode, and then they'll Econ the same monster back into attack mode, and you're like... <laughs> you're like, why are you doing that? That makes no sense. Yeah, see, there I would not have used the Econ, knowing that I had a spike. I would not have done that. But this time around, again, he actually did pretty good. But yeah, just certain little things, you know. Like, like again, like if you had a, a Swordswoman out there, they had two monsters, both 18 attackers, and you had a Swordswoman with a Spike Shield and a Floodgate. And if they summoned yet another 18 attacking monster, I don't think I would have burned the floodgate. I would have let it go. Doesn't use mirror wall to stick your game. <laughs> All right, come on, Odeon, do something stupid now. <laughs> Konami. Konami's like, no. We're not going to do anything stupid. All right, we got to face the little girl now. Come on, Odeon. You got you to gotta go in. <laughs> do something dumb against her. Super rush for no reason. Well, I've not had them do that. They, they tend to actually, at least from my experience, they tend to use super rush fairly well. The ones that I find that they use at the wrong times or at the dumbest times is usually Floodgate. Again, he's doing pretty well here. He did pretty good there. But yeah, sometimes, um, like, I've had them use stuff like floodgate like if i've got a really strong monster on the field now a floodgate face down 
and my opponent summons something ridiculous, um, I mean, like a really weak, ridiculous monster, they'll use Floodgate. And I'm like, why? That doesn't make sense. <sighs> Steals from a child, haha. ODM did something stupid. He he does, I mean, but the, the, then again, the thing about Odeon's deck, admittedly, is that there are there are a lot of different ways. Well, one, there's a lot of, obviously, there's a lot of different ways to play the deck. But two, you definitely have to adjust the way you play the deck based on the situation that you're facing, which can change from one turn to the next. So, like, for instance, if... I'm facing a warrior deck and I've got my Cypher Soldiers on the field. Yeah, it's usually safe to leave them in attack mode, but if I'm facing something else besides warriors and I don't have anything set like a DNA surgery or anything to protect me, obviously, you know, you put them in defense, but sometimes Odeon doesn't do that. So he's kind of odd. But again, I think it all depends on the deck. Like one, one deck that I know that the AI plays really well tends to be um, any deck that, that benefits from being really aggressive. Like, uh, Masked Heroes can generally be pretty aggressive, and whenever I auto-duel with Masked Heroes, they usually do really good. But a deck like Odeon's, where it's sometimes better to be defensive, he, he will sometimes make mistakes like that. Yeah, I've already actually been streaming a lot longer than I thought I was going to. Vanilla Beat. Yeah, and that's the thing. I think that's why, like, whenever you go and you do, like, the auto-deck creation, um... The, the the AI builds a deck that it is good at. Because, I mean, it's, you know, generally if it's just a straight beat down, it's, it's pretty easy to deal with that. Oh, somebody was offering this card as an ultimate rare, and I was very tempted to buy it. But I didn't. So tempted to buy it. And now that I think back at it, I probably should have got it. Because I think they only wanted like a dollar fifty for it, and the thing about ultimate rares is those, for some reason, even the crappy ones <laughs> tend to go up in value. So, yeah, I think uh, if it's still available, I might actually go back and buy it. <sighs> but I think I'm gonna call it for the day. Again, guys, thanks for coming and hanging out with me. I appreciate it. Uh, again, make sure y'all check out the forum. Be really nice if all of y'all went over and head headed over there for a little bit. Just checked out some stuff. I've posted a bunch of stuff on there just to kind of try to keep it busy, to try to get people engaged, but you know it doesn't always work. But um, again, I will try to get the winner of this card as soon as possible. I'll probably send it out like I said tomorrow. Uh, but uh, I usually take Wednesdays off. If I do stream for some reason tomorrow, it probably won't be Duel Links. But I know it's getting late for some of you guys, so y'all head to bed. Over in England, if you're still in America, go eat some dinner. If you're over on Twitch, thank you for coming and joining us today. Uh, feel free to follow over on Twitch or subscribe over on YouTube, although I tend to like people to subscribe on YouTube more. Um, but uh, we'll see you Thursday, guys, for more Thursday Ring Duels, and we'll see how that goes, even though it won't be as great this time around. Let me see, because Thursday will be the 31st. Darn. Well, wait, doesn't the... How long is this season? Is it ending on the 30th or 31st? I don't remember when the season ends. Oh, until January 31. At... Oh, it ends... Oh, okay, wait a minute. It ends at 19. So that's 7 o'clock in the evening. So that's when the new season starts. Okay. So 7 o'clock that evening, the new season starts. So I don't know. May, well, I don't generally like to wait that long to stream because then, you know, all the people over like in England and France that watch, they, they're already asleep by then. <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll see how it's going to work out. Anyways, thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you all Thursday. Until then, uh, go eat a pot pie.